Hi, my name is Kathy Waldron and I want to welcome you today to the first show of In the Kitchen at the Belknap Mill. This year we're going to have four shows and they're going to all feature French Canadian recipes. This show coordinates with an exhibit we have planned for later this year celebrating the Laconia heritage of French Canadians. Hi, my name is Rosemary Robichaud and I am featuring an Acadian dish and I have a cookbook here that says La Cuisine Traditionnelle en Acadie. And you will find a lot of the recipes in there, but the one that I'm featuring today is called un râpé. Uh, râpé is a term that is used uh, mostly in New Brunswick. I have a friend from Rochester who makes this dish, and she is Acadian and from uh, uh, Nova Scotia, and she calls it la rapure. My mother called it du chiard. Um, I'm not sure how many people called it that, but I know they did in my family. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things that I have here. One of them is une rape. This was made by my father because the dish uh, uses grated potatoes. The interesting thing about the Acadians, this is not a dish that is typically French Canadian. This is Acadian, and the Acadian people were very different from the Canadian people. So the Acadian people uh, came over, they were French-speaking people that came over and settled in Nova Scotia in about 1650. Uh, they were very different than other settlers because they were very friendly with the Mi'kmaq Indians and they did not take over their land. They stayed on the coast and repossessed uh, the coast by creating dikes. And so their farmland was an amazing thing to see. Uh, a history of the Acadians is uh, wonderfully shown in a museum in Grand Pré, Nova Scotia, uh, which shows how the dikes were used. And so a lot of their foods had to do with uh, the stuff that they grew. And that's why a lot of their foods have to do with potatoes. So this particular dish is made with potatoes that I have here that I've already gotten peeled, some salt pork, which I've already cut up here, a, um, some pork. Now my mother made it with pork chops. I just cut up some pieces of pork and put in it. My mother-in-law made it with chicken. And so there were different recipes with different families. And also we use uh, a piece of bread and a couple of eggs. So I will get started now. Most of the potatoes were grated with this, which took a long time. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it out of a Cuisinart so that you can also uh, do it if you'd like to try it. So I'm going to take these potatoes and I'm going to put them in the Cuisinart and grate them. The consistency with the cuisinart is not exactly the same consistency as with the grater that uh, my father made. And so I will have to do it twice. While, uh, while we're doing the uh, potatoes, uh, we take the salt pork, which has been kind of cut up in little tiny pieces if you want to come and see that, okay? So we cut that up and we heat that up. All right, so I'm gonna let that cook and I'm going to uh, come over here and show you also that what we do is we take, I use the rop, but you can use a colander and I will take the bread and put it in the colander and put some very hot um, water on it to soften it up. The Acadian people 
and they were a very independent kind of person. And so they were living in Nova Scotia, and during that time, it was the time of the French and Indian War. The British and the French were constantly taking over the land. And so the French would come and say, okay, we want you to fight for us. And they'd say, no, 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 we just want to be farmers, leave us alone. The British did the same thing. They would come, they would take over the land, and they would tell the Acadians, okay, we want you to fight for us. No, 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 we, we, we just want to be our own people. Ooh, <laughs> sizzling sounds good. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking it because, as I said, with the cuisinar, the consistency is not quite the same as with the grated grater that my father made. And so uh, I do it twice with the cuisinar. So a lot of this is done with your hands. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this a second time, putting it in a second time. It's kind of a messy process. And so I was talking about a little bit about the history of the Acadians again. So with this back and forth with the French and the British, in the year 1755, the British were now in control and the governor was uh, Governor Lawrence in Massachusetts. And he decided that the Acadians needed to uh, show allegiance to the British king. And so he came into the Acadian villages. And what he did was he asked uh, all of the men to come into the churches, which were the uh, places of meeting. And so they came into the churches and they had to leave their guns. And after they left their guns there, they locked them in the churches and said, you must sign allegiance to the king. They decided that they were not going to sign allegiance to the king. And so he had ships come in. There were probably about 14,000 Acadians living in that Nova Scotia area. And what happened was 11 thousand of them, a little over 11,000 of them died. And they died because they were put on ships, separated families, put on ships, sent down to the British colonies. Some of them went to New England. Some of them were sent to the Carolinas, Georgia, and they were uh, used as indentured servants. In the time of the indenture, which was a certain period of time, when it was over, some of them walked back to New Brunswick to find their families. They wanted to reunite their families. And so you have pockets of the Acadians in New Brunswick. You have some in Nova Scotia. You have some on Prince Edward Island. You have a lot in the northern part of Maine. Uh, these people walked back to find their families and reestablish themselves there. So that's where you find the Acadians today. Uh, right now, I take the bread, which I have put um, in, under the water, and I kind of mush it up. And I take the grated potato, and I put that in there, and I kind of get some of the moisture out of it. I don't want to get too much moisture out because I don't want it to be too dry. Okay, after I've kind of taken some of the moisture out of it, I put it back in the dish. And I, as you see, it's kind of a messy process here. Uh, I put it back in the dish and I take my eggs and I mix that in.
And then again, as I said, it's kind of a process. Every, a lot is done with the hands. Uh, there is another dish called the poutine uh, rape, which is very different from the poutine of the Canadians. And it's also made with grated potatoes. And this is kind of how you make it also with your hands. Get everything mixed up with the hands. Okay, after I've done that, I take the salt bork, pork, which has been cooking, and I kind of uh, try not to get too much of the juice out of it because that will be poured later on the top. And so I take the salt pork and I put it in, uh, leaving the juice behind. And again, this will be mixed with my hands. And I save that juice and mix this all up with my hands. Because of the salt pork, as I said, you don't really need to put any kind of seasoning because that gives a real flavor to the rapi. And uh, you know, this was peasant food, and so it's not very attractive. Uh, the putin rapi were not attractive either. And so it's not an attractive kind of thing. So if you're looking for something with presentation on your plate, this is not it. If you're looking for something that's delicious, this is it. And then I take my mixture and I put it on the bottom like that. And also a little bit more about the history. So I told you that a lot of the Acadians uh, kind of walked back. The other interesting story is that many of the Acadians also walked to Louisiana because they heard that there was a French colony there. Well, the French who were in Louisiana were the aristocratic French, and they wanted nothing to do with these peasants. And so the peasants then went, guess where? To the bayou. And these people are called Cajuns. Now you can see the kind of independence from this, these people because what they did was once they were there, they adapted their foods to the area. And so you have the Cajun food in Louisiana, which is very different from the Acadian food in New Brunswick and uh, Nova Scotia. So this is kind of um, what we do. And then I take the um, over here and kind of pour it on top. And this kind of gives a little bit of the salt flavor, but it also gives the flavor of the um, salt pork and I kind of spread that around a little bit and now I'm ready to bake at 350 for two hours okay and so after two hours of baking you have the finished product which is the rapi and my family always used to fight for the end pieces because the crust was nice and crusty and just so good to eat. Rosemary, that looks absolutely delicious. Do I get to taste it? You do I'll get to taste it if you'd like. I'll give you a little piece here and you can... Uh, oh, you can get the end. You get an end piece, yes. <laughs> It, it doesn't come out always very nicely. Okay. <laughs> As I said, if you're looking for something beautiful, that's probably not it. Looks beautiful today. <laughs> but it's uh, very tasty, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. That's delicious. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Well, I, I really felt because the, the Canadians and the Acadians are a very different kind of people, that um, there are a lot of people who are... Canadian who will have no idea what I'm talking about. Most of the Canadians will not know what I'm talking about because it is not a Canadian dish. It is typical of New Brunswick, 
uh, Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. And of course the New England towns where the Acadians um, settled. As I mentioned before, Rosemarie is an author of children's books and we have her books here at the mill. Tell us a little bit about them before you go. Uh, well, the stories are kind of something that came into uh, being because of a friend of mine that I worked with at uh, Gunstock who had a farm and she went to get a pig to roast and couldn't do it and so that pig became her pet and so my first book Dee's Pig is about Dee and her pet pig uh, which goes through you know trauma because of the word pig roast and and because of having to make new friends and uh, having to learn to share so that's the first book and then I thought you know I think I'm going to think about some other kinds of animals that live on the farm and I thought of a rooster and a rooster is one of those very you know uh, kind of haughty kind of animals and so I thought oh I'll do a story on a rooster and so my second book Dee's Rooster also has lessons to it because it talks about bullying now you would probably think that that rooster was bullying but he was not he is the one who protects his roost and he protects his friends and he learns that you can do the best you can and that's what you need to be proud of not necessarily winning and so those are the two books that I wrote available here at the Belknap Mill. Thank you so much we really enjoyed the show you did a wonderful job telling us all about the how it came about and about the past and we want to mention that she's one of the featured um, people at our exhibit later in the fall so you can find out more about you and thank you for that as well. Well so, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you again in the kitchen at the Belmont Mill.